conversation was happening between a couple groups of people. And I can use my holy imagination what led them to this point. Uh, the conversation led to asking a simple question, what is the greatest law um, of the commandments? Or what is the most important commandment? And I can imagine what, what led to that point. I can imagine that there were a group of religious folks. Uh, don't, don't get upset. This is my own holy imagination. Sometimes I think we over-spiritualize the people that were in the Bible. Uh, we think because uh, there were groups in the Bible that they weren't like us. Amen. Amen. If they weren't like us, then why did Paul talk about gossiping All right. and division well, well. and fornication? All right. Just like y'all, huh? Mm, just like us. I tell you, they were just like us. Amen. And so I can make some holy imaginative statements. My, my holy imagination said that they were having a conversation about what's most important uh, to honor God. And I can imagine one group talked about, well, it's how we dress. All right. mm -hmm. Some in that time were talking about the circumcision. Yeah. Amen. Some probably talked about where they sat at the king's table. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Some, some um, were talking about what you ate and how you wore your hair and whether you had a hat on or no hat on and covered and uncovered. I, I can imagine they were getting into all the stuff and then they said, let's just go to the dude, Jesus, who's been causing all kinds of problems. He said he's the son of God. Let's just simply ask him what is the most important law of the command because you know there were over 600 commands that we've given in the, um, in the Deuteronomy and Levitical codes and, 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 and we also know that uh, Moses summarize those things uh, to 10. So what is the most important? What is the most important? And Jesus, in his response to them, uh, in Matthew 22, 36 uh, through 39, he says, the most important command, the most important law, the most important thing you can do is love. Amen. And he says and that love is a, is a three-headed entity. It's a three-headed monster. It's a three-headed uh, being. It's a three-headed angel. It's a three-headed blessing. He says the first uh, part of that uh, is to love God. The second part of that is to love self. And the third expression is to love others. Amen. He says the greatest command is to holistically with our heart, our mind, our soul, and our very being is to love God love self, and love others. Amen. And so today, I want to focus on one another, how we love and the power of love. There are three laws, if you see your handout, the, the half sheet handout, there are three laws of love. And the first thing that I want to share with you all is the best use of our life is to, write it down, the best use of our life is to love. If you had to do just one thing for the rest of your life, God says, love folks. Love him and love yourself. Does that make sense? And so, so, so why? Why? Because there, there, are, there are four things I want to share with you really, really, really quickly. One is... If you look at it, love validates our faith. All right. Amen. Nothing else matters. The Bible teaches us if you give to the poor and have not love, it's nothing. That's right. The Bible says if you got a voice like that of an angel but have not love, nothing. As a matter of fact, um, whatever does not love does not know God because God is love. That's what 1 John 4 and 8 says. It validates our faith. Our faith is not validated by the positions we hold. It's not validated by the positions um, that we take politically. It's not validated by where we sit how we dress, what we eat, and come on, somebody. The only thing that validates our faith is our ability to express love to God, self, and others. Amen. If we say we love God but hate others, we are what? 
We are what? Liars. I didn't call y'all that. That's what y'all call yourself. <laughs> Amen. For we cannot love God whom we have not seen if we do not love others who we see every day. I want you all to think about this this way. Um, love is our pin number that, uh, that authenticates our identification. I'm going to say it again. There are things you have to have access to. And you can't have access to those things unless you have been validated that you are the person who is seeking access. And love is the pin number. Come on, somebody. That validates who we are and our ability to have access to the things that we want to have access to. Amen? So that's one. Two, love integrates our lives. Love integrates our lives. Love is more important than anything else, Colossians 3 and 14 says. Um, it is what ties everything completely together. Are you all with me? It integrates our lives. Watch this. Love needs to be um, uh, completely um, infused in every aspect of our life. We can't say that we love on Sunday mornings and then choose not to love Monday at work. Uh, we can't teach love in Sunday school on Sunday morning and then cuss out our husbands and wives at home. So we say, yes, you can. I, I do it all the time. I can show you, brother. I can, don't, don't worry. I can teach you that one, brother. I got you on this one. It, it, it pulls everything together. Everything we do, we must do in love. It, it validates and it integrates our lives. I've seen people, um, we had, we had a, a power out, we had a power outage in a portion of the house, um, and the guy who came along to help us, I mean, he should have did it in love, we paid him enough, shoot. And anyway, um, but the way he went about um, looking and diagnosing the problem and taking time and talking to Tanisha and, and all this kind of stuff, the way he made us understand, he did his job with such love. And I knew that was a man of God. Aww, you didn't get it. Yeah. I knew that he was a man of God, and I didn't even know what church he went to. He never quoted a Bible verse, but it, his whole life was integrated. Yes. All right. All right. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. 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 Does anybody ever know you, a man or a woman of God, who didn't see you leaving church? Does the life of love integrate or permeate every aspect of your being? Number three, quickly, I'm going quickly, I'm sorry. If I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down, Reverend. All right, y'all want me to go fast, that's cool. So one, uh, the best use of our life is to love, and why? There's three, there's four reasons. One, love validates our faith. Two, love integrates our lives. Three, love compensates for my sin. Lord have mercy. Most important of all, continue to show a deep love for each other, for love covers what? A multitude of sins. Watch this, watch this, 1 Peter uh, 4 and 8. Watch this, there's two things you need to understand about this. One, it says that love covers a multitude of sins. Please hear me on this. There's the first action. The first action is that Jesus' act on the cross covered our sins. Lord have mercy. In other words, when we sin, let me, some, someone say sin, I don't know what that means. When we blow it, when we miss the mark, when we transgress, when we do what we know we ain't supposed to do and try to justify, come on and, y'all know what I'm talking about? When we blow it, there's a penalty and a fine that comes with that missing the mark. And that needs to be covered. It's like sitting at a table eating food at a restaurant. Whatever you eat has to be paid for. Whatever you consume, the bill has to be covered. Whenever we miss the mark, we have a debt or a bill that has to be covered. And it says there's some things that can be covered by us. The sin is so deep, it must be covered by a blood sacrifice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And it says that Jesus' blood covered our sins. Amen. 
so that we can have access to heaven because our sins have been covered. It covers a multitude of sins. And your sins may not be my sins. And my sins may not be your sins. But I want you to understand that you got a sin. And I got a sin. And all God's children got a sin. And God will cover our sins if we confess and we believe his love covers our sins. Are you all with me on that? But the second thing that once we realize that our sins have been covered, someone has paid the price for the debt that we have made, watch this. Then the second thing kicks in is that we let others off the hook. I'm just going to finish now. Let's just have communion because y'all not with me today. I'm just saying. Because y'all was with me. How many of y'all was excited when you said, Reverend, my sins are covered. And you thought about some of the stuff that you couldn't believe that God covered. Amen. 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 Well, let me tell you something. If you're going to uh, be a recipient of God's incredible covering, then you have to let some folks off the hook when they hurt you. Amen. You can't live in a world where everyone is going after everyone because your feelings got hurt. Right. You know, one of the things, I just could I just take a moment to say this? Mm-hmm. One of the things that we, we really misrepresent, I said we, us preachers, we take 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we read that in weddings all the time because we say that's the, that's the scripture for weddings and marriages. Well, actually... That scripture is a scripture that Paul wrote for Christians how to live with each other. And part of that, that pericope is that love keeps no record of wrongdoing. It works for marriages too, but it also has to work for us in relationship with one another. You know, one of the things I said to someone, uh, we were talking the other day, and I said, you know what kills me? What kills me when people make up stuff that I've done. <laughs> I'm like, that's so dumb, because you don't have to make it up. You can just tell the truth. I've done a whole bunch of stuff that you ain't got to make up. <laughs> How many of y'all know? You see, you ain't got to make up no stuff. I got stuff. <laughs> make it up stuff, man. I got some good stuff I'd have worked hard to be in. Just, just talk about this. <laughs> Love validates our faith. Love integrates our lives. Love compensates for our sins. Watch this. And love reverberates forever. There are three things that will continue forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these things, love. Let me just take a moment to talk about this for just a moment. I told you I won't, I won't be long. Uh, I'm almost halfway, not finished, but I just wanted to encourage you. Um, what we do in love lasts longer than we can do in the material world. It lives far beyond anything else we can do. Let me just give you a real very personal uh, moment. I I told you all, you know, uh, I was talking to one of the preachers at the game and he says, how's it going? I said, man, it's going well. I said, but you know, I, I find myself thinking about some of those who have transitioned and gone on since I've been here. Uh, in particular, I was talking about Mrs. Dover. Uh, yesterday, I was at a hometown buffet with some of the new members, and I just that was our spot. Mrs. Dover would call me every now and then and say, uh, it's time for you to take me to lunch. <laughs> she didn't say, can we go? She said, it's time. And, I, and then she would say, clear your calendar from this time to this time, because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. And one of the days, we were over at the hometown buffet, and we were sitting there talking, and she just kind of stopped in the middle of her conversation, and she says, you know, she said, she calls him Dover. You know, Dover loved me so well that even in death, I still feel his love. Amen. 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 She said that he cared for me so much that he provided for me to have the same lifestyle that I have now that he was when he was alive. She said his love lasts forever. Listen to me. I want, I want the people. 
who are in my circle, that when I transition, I want them to say, my friend Ivan, my dad, my pastor, my brother, his love still blessing me. Love lasts. It reverberates through time. Can I pause for a moment? How many of you all know that you have loved ones that have already transitioned in heaven, and yet you're still a recipient yes, yes. of their love? We ought to celebrate yes. that God allowed us to receive love even after our loved ones have gone on. Yes. The best use of our life is to love because love it, it validates our faith, it integrates our lives, it compensates for our sins, but it lasts forever and ever and ever. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 No matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Amen. Let me give you two more and we'll get out of here. The best expression of love is time. How do you spell love? T-I-M-E. We must show love through actions that are sincere, not through empty words. It's amazing. Um, I'm, I'm amazed at, at how we talk about every generation and how young people, uh, kids can teach a very powerful lesson. Um, <coughs> There was a social worker, there was a social worker who worked with a family and, and, and this little boy had to choose between living with his mother or his father. And they were trying to get in, and I won't go into which one, which, well one talked about, um, I know he's gonna choose me because I give this and I give that and he has everything he ever wants and I give this to him. The other one says, I don't give him much but you know, we spend time together. And a little boy said without a shadow of God, I want to be with the one who loves me the most. And the one who gave all the gifts smiled. And the little boy says, I want to be with the one who spends time with me. Yeah. And, and the social worker says, how do you determine that this one loves you more? And he says, because this one spends time with me. People don't need more stuff. Come on, somebody. What makes a difference is quality time spent together in fellowship. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself in love. Live a life filled with love for others following the example of Jesus Christ who loved you and gave himself as a sacrifice to take your sins away. The most important thing that we can do is spend time with those we love. Yes, sir. That's right. Some of us, you know, it's, it's interesting that um, we break our necks to give our families homes that are large enough for everybody to go to their own corner and not be seen. And I grew up in a house, and you know that uh, we, I told you all last week, we used to call my house the mission. My mama always had some strange person coming to live with us. I come home like, and who is this? Well, I was at the grocery store, and, and, and they, they, <laughs> it's more of them in the house? <laughs> we had a two bedroom, one bathroom, 700, almost 800 square foot home, nestled in a gated community called Watts. <laughs> Situated between the Nickerson Garden, come on somebody, and Avalon Court Projects. <laughs> and we were all over each other. And I'm gonna tell you, I didn't even know we had a, a bathroom door in our house because we, doors never closed. We were just winning good in the game, right? But we were so close because we spent time, we were forced to spend time with each other. And now we, we don't spend time with each other. We break our necks to be able to go into our separate corners. 
love yeah. is time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The last thing <coughs> as I close, I told you all, the best use of our life is to what? Love. To love. I told you all, um, the best expression of our love is what? Time. time. And the best time to love is when? Now. now. The best time to love is now. Whenever we have the opportunity, we should go, uh, we should do good to who? Everyone. To who? Everyone. When should we do that? Now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't put it off. Look for opportunities to be a blessing and to show love now. Use every chance, Ephesians 5 and 16 says, Use every chance you have for doing good. Um, Proverbs 3 and 27 and 28 says, whenever possible, um, whenever, uh, whenever, possi whenever you possibly can, I'm sorry, do good to those who need it. Never tell your neighbor to wait until tomorrow if you can help them now. It also goes on to say, uh, eagerly pursue and seek to acquire love. Make it your aim. Make it your great greatest quest. That's 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. It says that our aim now, not next week, now should be to love. Let me give you two things and I'll take my seat. The one thing I want you to understand is that if you ever feel like your life is empty, then I challenge you to make love your aim. If you make love your aim, God will fill you until you want no more. You will never be bankrupt. You'll never be empty if you spend your life trying to make a difference. And here's the thing I want you to understand. You don't have to look hard. You can probably start right in your own home. One, one, one young lady um, told me that she was going to try to be more loving and she was going to start by not being so negative around the people she's closest to. Mm -hmm. She called me two hours later, she said, I need to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> she, said, she said, it's hard to do this, right? And, 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 and so what I want to say to you all is this, that love is not easy. Love is a choice. It is not a feeling. It is something we do in spite of how we feel. But when we make a commitment and choose love, God will fill us with a power from on high and we will see that we can do more than we could ever think, hope, or imagine because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. So I'm, I'm a part of this group and they, uh, and I'm going to share this this mission statement, they, they said that everyone should have a personal mission statement. Mm -hmm. and, and they talked about um, identifying uh, some of your core beliefs and what you think that your purpose here on life is. And you get all these kind of things, what you enjoy and what you like and so forth and so on. And then, and then it goes on to tell you that um, you're to take those kind of core things that are who you are and try to theme them up, make themes, uh, uh, categories. And then from those categories, um, um, they wanted us to text. They told us to text uh, five or six people who are close to you and say, do you think that these things are indicative of who you are? And the people would respond back. And so, and so, um, and from that we made a statement that we should live by. I'm going to share my statement in just a moment. But one of the things that I want to do with the young adults, um, if they would give me the opportunity, I would love to go do that exercise with young adults. And I think that this exercise will help guide our lives in everything that we do. Many people don't have direction because they don't have a vision for their life. Right. Wow. That's right. If you know who you are and how God wired you and what God placed you here for, that becomes the uh, determining factor of how you, how you move and how you make decisions and what jobs to take and what opportunities right. to say no to and things like that because you got to know who you are. Amen? Amen. And, so, and so the overwhelming... Um, uh, things that came back for me were things around laughter, around love, and around inspiration. 
And so I came with this statement, and I would love for you all to give me feedback because I go back at the end of this month um, saying that, yes, I accept this statement or not. So my statement in life, what I'm going to use to guide my steps, my faith was a part of that as well, to guide my steps, is that I desire to do simply three things for the rest of my life. I want to love sincerely. I want to laugh deeply. And I want to inspire others to do the same. Let me give it to you again. Love sincerely for me means to spend time with folks, to slow down and spend time, focus time, put your cell phone down, reverend, and spend time being present, loving sincerely. I want to laugh at myself and at you. And I want to laugh as often as I can, mm -hmm. and I want to hurt my ribs for laughing mm -hmm. so hard. And then I want to inspire you to do the same. Right. I don't want you to take life so serious. That's right. That's right. I want you to relax a little bit. If you got some hair, let it down. <laughs> if you got to buy it, buy it and let it down. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Nicole's right. like, Lord, have mercy, help me. Right. This post, who I am. How many of y'all just pray for me? Um, someone told me, you know, you know, you, 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 you laugh too much. I said, no, you don't laugh enough. Don't, don't, set, don't set your standards on me. God wired me this way. Amen. 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 And I'm going to be who I'm is. Does that make sense? Yep. So we've learned two weeks ago, um, be hospitable for one another. Last week we talked about consider one another. Today I want to tell us and encourage us to what? Love one another. For love is the most important thing. Uh, the best use of our life is to what? Best use of our life is what? Love. The best expression of our love is what? Time. time. And lastly, the best time to love is when? Now. Good. Stop what you're doing. Lean over to someone and say a word of encouragement. Give someone a hug because the time is now. Yes. Come on. Show an expression of love. <laughs>